It's another interesting episode of Labor Lens where we bring to you updates information in the world of work and pay. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's episode of the program, we have interesting news stories for you and more. The conversation continues in a moment. Organized labor, which consists of the Nigerian Labor Congress, the Trade Union Congress, and the United Labor Congress say there won't be industrial harmony if the presidency fails to submit the report of the new national minimum wage by the last day of the year. This was after an emergency meeting in Lagos. The labor leaders condemned the planned setup of a high-powered technical committee to review the figures submitted. They say it's alien to the tripartite process and ILO conventions on the national minimum wage setting mechanism. The high-powered committee is alien to any form of our tripartite processes for uh, collective bargaining. And therefore, the organized labor will not be part of that technical, high-powered technical committee. So, it's just like putting the card before the horse. In fact, we've concluded all processes. If you are talking of state governments, they were part of the tripartite committee. Uh, as we said, it's delayed tactics and diversionary, you know. And and I think we have informed enough the labor uh, movement to fall into such a trap. Outside the premises of the Lagos Judicial Division of the Court of Appeal, at least the 100 pensioner made efforts to see through this contentious matter which has been within the court system for at least 27 years. They began their action in the wrong court and practically exhausted their rights to the Supreme Court, which ruled that they had a case but with a wrong approach. The pensioners argued that they were federal civil servants who were forcefully retired but had a private pension scheme for which the court ruled that this was inconsistent, null and void. After challenging the decision at the High Court and the Supreme Court, they were referred to the National Industrial Court in Abuja, which ruled in 2012 in favor of NSPMC. But the retirees were not satisfied and challenged the matter at the National Industrial Court in Lagos. At the court in Lagos, the judge ruled that the matter is statute barred and abuse of court process, since another court of competent jurisdiction has given judgment on the matter. This aspect of the judgment of 2012 has taken the aggrieved pensioners to different courts to prosecute the matter. Their grouse is forceful retirement from the employer of the NSPMC and the need to reconsider their manner of disengagement from service. Justice Toby Idowu, who delivered the judgment, upheld the decision of the National Industrial Court of 2012 to the effect that the case amounted to an abuse of court process and was not that too bad. The court also held that it lacked the jurisdiction to hear it and that the case lacked merit because the pensioners were not in the employ of the federal government as the NSPMC is now privately owned. The argument before the court was that uh, the parties are not the same and that uh, the claims are not the same. Uh, but, well, you cannot question the court. When the court has given a decision, the court has given a decision. The alternative you have is to go on appeal. But in this situation, there is no opportunity to go on appeal. Our argument is simple. This is a private company without subvention from government. If you are paid mm, in line with the Pension Act, that company will go under. They know it. The management knows it. So what did we do? We had a meeting that, look, let us have something. You can always look at this. And they, we had an agreement. But their leadership said, no, it must be caught. This meeting we had in 2014. By now, whatever we agreed could be revealed. 
The case between the Nigerian printing and minting ex-workers and the company has been on for more than 27 years. At the Court of Appeal here in Lagos, judgment has been pronounced in favor of NSPMC. Now, the retirees are saying that 1,000 Naira as monthly pension is not sufficient for them. As can be imagined, they are not just shattered but confronted with the reality of a lifetime's work not rewarded. My wife has died. My wife has died. But God, in his finite mercy, has told us he has provided. So, if everybody has any problem like this, you should have that belief that God has provided. The major issue that they need to address was not addressed. Our problem is what you are paying. Do you understand? You are not paying us well because at least no one will say somebody earning 1,000 Naira is living, if not by assistance of other people in his own uh, climb. They are asking the federal government to intervene. The Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria held its 40th anniversary, which coincided with the 45th session of the National Executive Council meeting. With several challenges faced by the labor sector, the union chose an appropriate lecture theme, Industrial Relations in Nigeria, to these challenges and prospects. If you go to Kaduna, you see Nigerians who are suffering. If you go to Enugu, you see Nigerians who are suffering. If you go to Bayelsa or any place, you see Nigerians who are suffering, who are living in abject poverty. And in these places too, you see Nigerians who are living in complete opulence. The class divide is there. For me as a person, I've always looked at issues from the class perspective, not where you come from. Your Representative of Nigeria's Minister of Health also spoke on the theme. Considering the frequent industrial disharmony that exists in the health sector, understanding the fact that Nigerians have it rough during any industrial unrest in the health sector, the death toll during such crisis rises astronomically. And poor Nigerians are exploited by the private hospital operators and quacks. Hence, dialogue should be your watchword in every situation to enable Nigerians enjoy the dividends of democracy, especially in the health sector. The president of Nigeria Labour Congress. NLC, who is also the president of the International Trade Union Center, spoke on the challenges facing the health sector and the way forward. Uh, in terms of healthcare delivery, the quality, I can say, or the professionals, I can say that the professionals are among the best we have in the world. Our problem is how to manage the system uh, because we have best practices all around the world on how to manage our healthcare system. We have experts on healthcare system, and I think. One of the very important rudiments is about having harmony in the system because we have different professionals who, in their own right, are supposed to provide quality healthcare services. So the way you manage the system is very, very important. In our own case, uh, the best way also to measure uh, the performance of our health system is about the indices. And because those indices are also indices for development, uh, the issue of life expectancy, uh, the issue of uh, the disease burden and how we're able to take care of them, uh, the, diseases, the issue of uh, maternal and child mortality, all of these are indices that are also used globally to measure development. In terms of our indices, certainly we are not doing well. Those managing health, the health industry now, will you say they are the most knowledgeable in the management and administration of the health care delivery in Nigeria? 
when has a medical doctor become a health administrator? And you know that the global practice that we used to talk is that you go to all these advanced countries, hospitals are managed by health administrators. So a situation where the minister is a doctor, the minister of state is a doctor, every director in the ministry is a doctor, and all other health professionals in the group are relegated to the background. And only if a group is favored, you know that there is crisis and social injustice exists, and therefore you can no longer work as a team. That is the reason why healthcare delivery system is in sharpest in Nigeria. Awards were given to workers and government officials at different levels for promoting efficiency in the health sector and the union.